I just want to give like an intro for the replay because whoop, I'm gonna put this unedited on YouTube. Um, I'm gonna paint with some paints that I mixed up previously. Sky Blue Light and Thalo Green and two pigments from this little piggy pigments from Fluid Art Co. Latte. I don't know if I put it the light like that maybe you can see and Aspen these ones have been sitting for a little while like a little bit over a week I think since I've used them maybe more I need to mix them up and check the consistency and stuff like that so I'm just gonna get started opening them up and making sure they're all the same consistency before I fill my bottle and I'm gonna do a Persephone's potion pour like my last live painting where I, <coughs> excuse me, what I do for this is I need to move the camera, it looks a little bit, my phone was angled a little bit, okay, um, I fill the paint up so far and then I let it sit and let the paints mix together and these paints, no, this paint has silicone in it. This, and none of the other ones do. I forgot this one doesn't, but I thought it did. This one does not have silicone. And that's right with whenever I painted last time. Okay. Sorry, I was just thinking last time, um, my, my TLP pigments don't have silicone in them, but um, this one does and this one doesn't. Last time I painted with a couple of colors that both had silicone and then one pigment. And um, I feel like maybe I painted with two colors and one pigment, but I don't remember. Anyway, anyway, I fill it up. I let it sit for a while and the paints to interact. I don't know how to like to not have people try to join, but um, let the paint sit in that and try to interact and then I put the cork in it and I let it sit for a while and then I turn it upside down and let it sit for a while then I turn it back up right and let it sit for a while let all the paints mix together at all of those stages <coughs> that's why I let it sit for a while so all the paints can mix together and um, then I finally pour it out and all of those different layers of paint mixing together are what cause the effects that I get that I like in the paintings. And this has been sitting for a while so I have to check the consistency on everything. I can tell right away that is way thicker than it was when I left it so I'm going to have to thin it down. Um, the noise that you can hear in the other room, my dog's having some treats. It's okay honey. You don't have to be quiet. I was just telling them that you were eating. This one is thinner. This one is one that has the hair serum in it for silicone. That's the one that's thicker. I wonder if that makes a difference. Or maybe there's more of it so it got thicker. That doesn't make sense though. You would think if there was less of it. I don't know. They were all mixed to the same consistency for the time whenever I used them for their pores, but now I need to make sure they're the, all the same consistency together for this pour. This one is thicker like the blue, but this one is thinner like, more like how I like them. So I'll have to thin those two to match. And then Aspen. I don't have a lot of Aspen or Latte left, so my intent is to finish using those so I can clean the jars and mix up something else in it for next time. I did finish my jar of caramel drizzle last time and cleaned it all out and it's ready for the next thing I want to mix in it. Um, I just had like a script in my head I was trying to get through, like explaining the pour that I was going to do and I kept getting distracted. I'm finally 
um, I don't have like, I'm not gonna have a monologue and talk the entire time, but I do like to do these live so I can explain my process or what I'm thinking or what I'm doing and have that captured and I can share the replay to YouTube and um, other people can see it and maybe learn from any mistakes I make or learn from anything that I maybe fall into that works. Give me one second. I know that I don't know anyone else. I don't know of anyone else that uses this. This is my secret ingredient to all of my pouring mediums and my mixed paints and even pre-mixed paints. I use this to match consistencies if some are thicker than others. Instead of water, I use golden airbrush medium. I have used Liquitex airbrush medium before as well, but this has a very thin consistency because you know airbrush is thin and it just plays really well with the paints because it's a, it's a medium for, for acrylic paints, so, or for, yeah. These ones, I want to see, I'm just going to start with this one. This one is thicker than the green one, but not as thick as the other two. So this one won't take a lot of airbrush medium, just a few drops, just like a squoosh. And then I love these whisks for stirring because it, everything mixes right in. This is my Aspen pigment from this little piggy. I don't have a lot of the pigments left, but since I have two, I should have more than enough. I mean, I should have plenty for this pour. Yeah. I just took a sploosh. <laughs> um, this one might take like a sploosh and a half because it's a little bit thicker. This is the thickest one. So I'm going from the thinnest to the thickest. We'll put that in. These pigments are so beautiful. I can't wait to mix some more. I told myself I wanted to use up all of the paints that I mixed with this pouring medium before I started mixing more. I finally got Floetrol and I'm going to reconfigure my pouring medium with adding Floetrol in there because it's cheaper than the Golden Gloss Medium and the GAC 800. And I, um, I know what ratio I used to use of Floetrol to GAC 800 to Liquitex pouring medium and I used to actually use like airbrush medium in my recipe. Um, now I know better like I like using the airbrush to thin after I've used my pouring medium with stuff and gotten the consistencies as close together as I can. Okay we need a little bit more in this one. Um, so, I have changed up the way that I use airbrush medium in the medium itself, and I want to change up the ratio of the gloss medium to the GAC 800, but I also want to change up my ratio of Floetrol to those other items because I like the glossier effect from using the gloss medium, but the gloss medium is more expensive. So um, I used to do like 3 to 1 to 1 to 1 or 3 to 1 to 1 and a half, like half or the last one being the airbrush medium. Um, just as testing like to see how much to use and I found out it's best just to add it at the end or add it like this. to to match your consistencies. But anyway, um, I'm thinking of doing two parts Floetrol to one part Gloss Medium to half part GAC 800 and see if I um, 
get more of that glossier look from the gloss medium that I like, from the gloss medium in the GAC 800 that I like, and less of the matte from the Floetrol. But that way, um, I'm still using more of the Floetrol than the other products so that I can try to keep the cost down a little bit. So that's my plan for like my next paints that I mix up, I think. And I know if you're just like randomly watching this live and you're not an artist this may make no sense to you but um i'm saying like all of my thought process out there for um anyone who wants to maybe try it out if you're interested in learning or trying it for yourself i want to tell you what i'm doing so as i show you we um whether it works or not you'll know if you want to try it if it's going to work or not i still need just a little bit more of that i think And I like putting all my thoughts out there for any artists who are watching the replay on YouTube. Just for any, um, just to give you any ideas. If any of you um, are watching this that I know, um, I'd, I'd love for you to try the airbrush medium as like a consistency matchmaker instead of whatever you use. And let me know, like, comparatively what you think of the results. Because I don't know other people that use it. And so I don't know if other people like it or not. I like the... There are some effects that I think I get from it where it adds a little bit of transparency to the paints, too, I think. And maybe you don't always want that. So maybe I need to start finding a way to do it with maybe not every color having it and see if that makes a difference that would be interesting too like this i don't know i finally got i have a lot more of that latte now than when i started because i had to thin it down to match but see it's but it's still i don't know if i can show you um i have the hardest time with the angle with this front facing camera um it's very runny, like a pre-mixed pouring paint, which I love, but it's still a very thick, creamy, it's still a very thick, creamy texture. Um, it has a lot of, so you can see how fat those drops are before they fall. It has like a thick, creamy texture because of the, it's still medium, and like this, Ooh, this especially the pigment I use the heavy gloss gel in there I think that makes a difference and and those have my Vallejo satin airbrush varnish I used airbrush varnish instead of the Yosonia gloss varnish because I use airbrush medium and I wanted to try the satin varnish and see if it made a difference and I don't know if it made like a difference in like a satin varnishy, like satin effect. Maybe I didn't use enough for that, but um, I still like how they came out the way that I made them, mixed them up. So I'm gonna, um, whenever I reconfigure my pouring medium, I hope they come out the same way. This one isn't quite as thick as I thought it was, but it's. There's a lot more paint in there, so it's going to take more medium, I think, to thin it the way that I want it. I didn't know I had this much of this blue. If I do it slowly like this from this side, I can see... Um, whenever it becomes one color instead of having like the lighter color with the white in it. I don't know how that shows in the camera. There. Let me see if I can get It has the run factor, but it just has a thickness to it still. It 
that one just had it is thinner. Yep, that one still, it just still has a thicker feel. I don't know how to explain it. You just have to feel it. Honestly, just painting and spending time just feeling the paint and looking at the paint and thinking about what I'm going to do with it and all of that. It's just so relaxing and it's so meditative. Okay, I think that one's pretty close. Let me... It still has a thicker feel, but it looks like the run factor looks like it's where it needs to be. I'm going to try to find a tube of paint. Okay, I see why it has the... It has, I understand why it seems like it's, I don't know. This may make no sense, but it just felt different and something in my mind told me that this one is opaque, um, that maybe that's why it is denser, I don't know, but then that's why I looked for the bottle, this black square means that it's opaque, I think. So maybe that's why it was like, it has the same like run as the others, but it still has like this thickness. So I wondered if that had to do with the opacity and I guess it does. I don't know. So that makes me wonder, I don't think I want to put it in first because The other paint might not... Uh, it's one with silicone anyway. I don't know. I'm trying to decide what order I want to put my paints in. Because now I'm ready to fill the cup. Or fill the potion bottle. Like I said, I'm going to do a, what I call Persephone's Potion Pour. I'm listening to see if Celia goes to take a drink. Because after her next drink, I think I need to fill her bowl up again. But I'm gonna put, I'm going to, <laughs> I'll put this up here, fill my potion bottle and then let it sit and I'll go through all of that as we go. I'm going to start with the phthalo green. I'm trying to remember, it doesn't have silicone. And then I want to do the blue, which does have silicone, sky blue light, and then some Aspen TLP, and then phthalo green. Sky blue light. Yeah, it just has a thicker look. I think that has to do with the. I don't know. I don't know. It just looks different than the others. That I've never noticed that before. Okay, latte, TLP, latte. And now I want to do. The sky blue light again. Phthalo green. A 
husband. Let's go to the right. Dalo green. Latte. Okay, let's see how much paint I have. Okay. I want just a little bit more paint. So, now what will I do? I think I'll put Aspen next to that latte. And then some more green. And I think that's probably about enough paint, but I may want to put just a little bit more, just to have a little bit extra. I don't know though. I think I'm going to leave it like that and then set these aside and I can add more later if I need to. I think that should be enough paint though. Right now, I'm taking my time with clean, like wiping these down and moving them and I'll wipe this paint up and stuff just to pass the time because I need to, I want to let this sit. I don't know if you can see how the paint is interacting in, in there while it sits with the different, um, with the pigments and the sky blue light having silicone. I think it's, we're going to have some nice effects whenever I pour it out, but I have to be patient and wait for it to do its thing before I do anything. I could have kept that in case I need to put stuff on the sides, I think. Let me move this stuff back here. It's still within reach if I need to use it. And I still have some of those pigments left. I thought I would use up all of those pigments. Can you see the effects in that bottle? That's so cool. Let me try to hold it up for you. Isn't that neat? I can't wait to see how this comes out. I don't know. 
talking about the light, but I'm gonna let it sit for just another minute. And um, does anyone have any questions or anything? Is there anything you want to talk about? Hi. Thanks for someone. I see. I just now saw that someone sent one of the hearts. Thank you. That's so awesome. Thanks for being here. I am sitting and waiting for the paint to react before I put the cork in. Um, I moved my jars out of the way and I, if I need more, I can just grab them. This part of the process takes just a little bit of waiting. If you're watching this on the YouTube replay, you can just fast forward um, until you see me actually picking up the bottle. If, I mean, you can watch me do the, the pour part. Or like the, the next, the next few minutes of this are going to be boring. So if there's anything you want to talk about, just um, leave some comments and we can chat. But um, for now, I'm waiting for the paints to interact. Um, I'm very curious to see how that light blue, that sky blue light with the silicone reacts with the phthalo green and those two pigments in there, which are aspen and latte. Um, but I want to give it time. I think it's probably sat long enough for now. Um, for, and now we're going to the next step. And it's 5.15, so we'll let this sit here with the cork in for like a minute or two. And this will keep... Now air can't get in there anymore, so the paints will settle at what... I don't know. My hope... I like to... I don't know um, if this step makes a difference or not. But I like to try it to see um, where I let it just sit with the cork in it without letting new air get in there. I don't know if this makes a difference or not. I need to test this out to see if I put the cork in and turn it upside down right away. See if I still get the same kind of results as I get whenever I let it sit without any air getting to it. Um, but right now this part's kind of boring to watch. Uh, but it's, I like to be patient to see, um, give it time to have as much interaction between the paints as I can. Oh, you didn't miss much 10 minutes ago. <laughs> I filled up the bottle though. I poured my paint in that, um, so I guess you missed that part. I used sky blue light and phthalo green and two pigments from this little piggy pigments, Aspen and Latte. And I use airbrush medium to thin down all of my paints to match the thinnest consistency, which was the phthalo green. After they'd sat for like a week or two, I don't know how long some of them have sat, um, I had to thin them all down to match again. And then I put my paint in there. I just saw a bubble pop in there. So bubbles are still forming and popping in there. That's really interesting. So maybe this step in the process is important while I give it time to see what happens without new air getting in there. How is it going to circulate um, with those different paints? It's 517 so um, I'll give it another like minute, maybe do it three minutes and then we'll do it upside down for maybe three minutes and see, and then turn it back upright and then take the cork out and then we'll pour. Um, Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Like putting the cork in there, I think without letting any new air get in there, those paints are already interacting, but now it's just in like an enclosed environment. I like to give it time to sit and see if anything else happens because 
of the, especially the, because of the silicone in the sky blue light, because it, um, silicone has like a hydrophobic effect, so it pushes away, um, like the wetness around it, so it pushes its way through the paints and makes, that's what causes like different like designs that come out in the paint. Um, give me just a second. I'm going to share this to my Facebook page and I will be right back. To come back, I realized that goes away and excuse me for the replay on YouTube. There's just going to be a break in there. Um, but it's, it's been four minutes now, so I'm going to, I call this part, um, I, the first time I used this kind of bottle with the cork in it, I was painting with the energy of the goddess Persephone, and so I call it the Persephone's Potion Pour, and when I turn it upside down, like this, we're going to the underworld with Queen Persephone, and then when we turn it back upright, we're coming back to the human world, or the godly world, you know, we're coming back from the underworld when we go back upright. Um, it's 520, so we'll wait a few minutes before we go back upright, before we come back from the underworld, and then I'll take the cork out, and we'll pour it and see how it comes out, and see how I want to tilt it or spin it or anything. I just, um... I don't have much of a plan before I start. I just let the energy of what the painting is supposed to be guide me to create it. Um, right now, um, I don't know if you saw, I had a video up on my page earlier where I shared, if you can see, I don't know if you can see like these spots on here. I coffee infused my canvas a little bit with my favorite seasonal creamer, white chocolate raspberry, and I I just added a few drops on there to, just a minute baby, I just added a few drops on there to infuse like Christmas magic into this painting, so I'm so excited for this wintry Christmassy painting. I'm going to let my dog outside, I'll be right back. I'm excited for, um, I used this green with a primary red for like a solstice -y painting, um, and then I used the light pink and the blue and Naples yellow with something, and then I kind of mixed some of the colors together, and I'm hoping that this one gives me, um, solstice -y vibes with like the Christmas tree and then like the the latte and the light blue make me think of snow. So I'm hoping that it's Christmassy and snowy, but I have no idea what it's going to be like. That's the most exciting and my most, one of my most favorite parts about painting is I put together some ideas or follow some inspirations and wait and see what happens. Like experimenting with it and seeing what the energy that I am thinking about, like how that goes into the painting and, and what it comes out to look like. So um, the most exciting part is not knowing how it's going to turn out and being excited and um, happy every time. Maybe not every time. I used to not be happy every time, but um, Whenever I realize I don't have, with fluid art I don't, and abstract art, I don't have a lot of control about what it's going to look like when it's done. And once I've given up that control to like the energies that I co-create with, it's just become so much more fulfilling and pleasing and 
inspiring and exciting for me to start painting. Like every day I think, ooh, like what can happen with this energy and these colors? Let's see. Every day, every painting is an experiment because I try something just to see what'll happen. And I, um, I ask different energies. Like it, painting, being with the paints and the colors and the flow and the energies puts me in a meditative state. And I have my meditation sounds playing in the other room that you probably can't hear, but I can. So it puts me like, while I'm waiting, it puts me in like the meditative state to, um, to just kind of say what comes out without really thinking about it. But painting is always an adventure. And I, like with this one, I, like I said, with the coffee, I put the coffee on there and I said a few words about, um, I want that magic of the holidays to come through in the painting. I want it to give people that good, happy, Christmassy, um, solstice thankful, giving, joyous energy. Like, that's, that's what I'm trying, that's what I want to put into it. And I don't, a lot of times whenever I paint and make these videos, I don't get to, like, talk about this part of it because I'm just rushing through the steps to try to get finished. But that's why I like doing these lives but that I can later put on YouTube where people can chat with me now or chat with me in the comments and um, take it a little bit slower and see what happens. Now we're gonna come back from the underworld just as Celia comes back inside. One, two, three, four, five, six, and here we go. And now I'm going to let it sit like that for just like a minute or two. Close the door and I'll be right back. take the quirk out now this is the last step and now I want to let it sit for just a couple of minutes with the quirk out to let that air get back in there again I want all of the paint to be able to resettle down to the bottom of the potion bottle and this has paint all over it so we're gonna just put this around the corners so there'll be a little bit wet or so that they will have paint on them in case the corners are the hardest part to tilt to cover or spin to cover the, t the corners are the hardest part to cover in fluid art I think and if I dab some color on there then I don't have to worry if they happen to not get something on there for what one reason or another and I'm just going to go ahead and smear some on the sides for the same reason. That way they do have a little bit of paint on there. It won't just be like, see I'm not putting very much. You can barely see it. But I'm just putting it a little bit on there so that um, they won't be stark white. If for some reason the paint doesn't flow over the entire side. Instead of like ruining my composition on top, trying to tilt it to cover everything on the sides, I just want to make sure it's kind of wet. That's what I needed 
this stuff. That's what I needed this for. Shouldn't have wiped that blue up because now it's dried into the. It is okay. While that's sitting there airing out, I'm gonna go ahead and, like I said, go ahead and put like a very light smear on my side so that they have it doesn't have to be wet or anything it just has to be like a little bit of color on there in case the paint doesn't roll over the sides that way it's just not stark white and i'm going to do that on the top too just a little bit I don't know. I was in like that meditative state earlier and just talking. I don't even know what I said. Um, whenever I get in the meditative state, like I open myself up a little bit where my spirit guides and it's kind of like automatic writing, but I just like automatic talking. And I've, I've gotten myself doing this. That's like how I meditate and stuff. And I usually learn things through meditations that way, just opening up the conversation between myself and my guides. And it also helps me whenever I record things, whenever I'm meditating, like painting or playing singing bowls or something like that, because then I have it to go back and look at later and I'll be like, oh yeah, here's how this like came in to be later in my life, like after the fact. So I just kind of go with it when I start talking. This doesn't have to be, we don't have to do this part at all. I'll get that, um, that piece of paint dry. Get that off of there. I'm just getting it off of my fingers now. Last time I did kind of do the whole thing. That way, um, the whole canvas had some paint kind of soaked into it before my new paint got on there. That's the one. Oh, and so the silicone doesn't go down to the bottom of the canvas either. That's... I don't think I'm going to do that this time though. I think that's good enough. And I think it's been long enough while this has been sitting here. So I think that the what we've all been waiting for is almost here. I'm just about to pour the paint. Get to the actual fun painting part of the process. But I have to... I need to turn the light on for one thing. I have to tap back into the energy, the solstice energy that I want in the painting. Um, happiness, joy, childlike, wonder. Um, I want, these are like the things that I want people to feel like when they see the painting, I guess. Um, I don't know what. I spent time with the full moon outside a couple hours ago. It was really nice and I was, um, I recommend like talking to the moon and saying your wishes, like the things that you want to see happen over the next couple of weeks. And then when we get to the new moon, um, talk to the moon again and let her know um, what things came through that you wanted to happen and what didn't think about um 
what you can do to make those things maybe come true before the next full moon. I don't know. I don't know why I'm talking about that. Just moon stuff, I guess. And I'm doing this, I guess, like last time I did it, it was a lot of the colors to, um, so that it was covered where, um, so the silicone didn't make cells that lead, left pits down to the actual canvas. So maybe I just want a little bit of color on all of it, so none of it will be just Again, like the side stark white canvas. Some of those spots, some of it's still kind of whitish, but it's good. Hmm. Okay, I'm just gonna go for it and see what happens. This is the fun part. I needed to go start more towards the middle, I think, but it'll be okay. No, I didn't because this is how it's supposed to be. Maybe I needed a little bit more paint. Oh well. Nope, I did not because it will be how it's meant to be. Sometimes like the old me comes out thinking maybe some maybe I did something wrong, but then I remind myself that painting with energy, the energy will tell me what it's supposed to be like. Okay. Okay. I'm going to put just a little bit more in here. I'm going to tuck my never mind. Going to put a little bit more in here. Latte. Blue. Aspen. I think I want a little bit more blue. I 
I'm not going to do all the stages again. I'm just going to put it in and pour it out and go around the edges. And this will show us what the difference in doing all those steps is as well. This is just a flow extender using more of the same paints as a flow extender. I wouldn't always do this because it is um, a little bit wasteful. But I'm trying to use up these paints to clear out the jars. Um, I have enough left that I'll probably make another painting out of everything that's left. But you can see right there that shows that and that shows the difference and what flipping it like going to the underworld and back makes because there we just put it in and poured it out and then I don't know why I went back through that pretty color with the green but anyway this was the Persephone's potion pour where it creates layers and layers and lines and interactions and there it just went in the bottle and came out and it's just not the same but I'm letting it sit for a minute now um, because this part is mostly going to be gone. This this is what I'm working to keep as a Persephone's Potion Pour. That was just for a flow extender. And there's a little bit in there in case I need to put some on a sp specific spot later. Um, now I have like more paint than I needed, but I wanted, um, I didn't want there to be like a big puddle of paint here and no paint here because as it stretches, it's, it's going to like roll over itself and lose all of this going to these outer edges. And, um, now that the paint levels like match up, it's going to tilt better where I can keep a lot of what's going on here. Let me move this stuff out of the way again. I don't know if I want to tilt to that corner first or if I like it being like this. I like it being like this. I do. I'm going to spin first is what I'm going to do. This right through here looks like an abstract tree to me for me. But it also, it looks so interesting. I love the, all the lines and the different, um, I just love it. The uh, trippy effects. I love it so much. It's like, I don't know why it seems so dark in here. It seems darker in here than normal. I don't know how well you can see that. I love it so much. That's There's still way too much paint on there. I'm going to have to tilt again. Thank you for the likes. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I love how that looks like a tree from that standpoint. I love... This looks like landscapey, like that's the sky and these are like the mountains. And then this part makes me think of like water. I don't know. Don't worry about all this extra paint. I'll scrape up as much of what I can into I haven't the jars that I have my paint in, I have an empty one because I finished all of the caramel drizzle last time. So I can I'll scrape up as much of that as I can. I turn the this over so that it would be easier to get 
the runoff. so cool because I can see different things in different places I don't know why it seems so dark in here is that better like facing different ways I just love it Are we still live? I'm so sorry. My um, my phone shut off. My camera cut out. I let this sit for a little bit, and I decide, and I washed my hands off. My phone overheated, so I'm back. Um, is this still going? I think. Um, I looked at it. I really like this part this part if i look at it like this this part makes me think of a tree but i really like this side of it more than this side so what i'm going to do first is tilt a little bit off that way and then just kind of bring it back to the middle to hope i can save that tree shape but i want to spread more of this side out because it's what i like more than the other side I like both sides, but I just want maybe it's not going to move very much. I think it is. Yeah. Okay, and now if I tilt back this way. Let me hold on. Because I don't want to lose all of that. I just wanted to. Just wanted to stretch that part out some. Now it looks like this is like. Ooh, this is like. Makes me think of a Bob Ross painting. Um, just like a landscapey. I'm sorry, I'm having issues with this part here. It's like landscapey. Like this is water, but it's frozen. So it's like icy water. This is part of the, like a river, like a riverbed, and it gets wider here. And this is the other side. These are the hillsides. This is the hillside and the trees, and up here is like trees and mountains back in there, and that's kind of the sky where it's a little bit of lighter blue in that corner. I love that. I don't know if that makes any sense. Like, this part is the, the lighter color is like the water running through. This is the other side of the river. This is where it gets wider. And this is the hillside with the trees and the mountains and the trees. And this is kind of the sky like peeking over. I don't know. Maybe I just sound crazy. But I want to, which way do I want to tilt now? Oh, maybe I don't want to tilt again. I wonder if that's too much paint to leave on there or if I need to spin it again. I totally forgot. Again, I forgot. I need to heat it. I need to use my heat gun and see what happens because of that silicone. This whole look might change. So let me hold this up so that I can get a screenshot of that because I love it so much. And now let's heat it and see how that changes it. And I let it sit for a long time while I washed my hands and did all that stuff. That's the recycling bag of bottles. Or, so, I'll pick it up later. Oh, 
Let's see what happens, if anything. I think I dropped a black hair in the painting, maybe. I think I'll make a bigger mark if I try to take it out, so I think I'll just leave it. I think it's from Celia, my dog, and I'm fine with that. We're not getting any reactions from the silicone. Interesting. Let me try to heat it again. Maybe I've let it sit too long. I don't know, but I love it. I hope it dries okay. There's the cell coming up and it's, maybe I should have left it alone because it's going down to the canvas. That happened, like I was talking earlier about um, trying to put color on there so that when the cells form, they didn't go down to the canvas. Let's put some, a dot of latte in that one where it went down to the canvas because the latte doesn't have silicone in it. Maybe I should spin it one more time. I, now I'm feeling like doing that. Just a little bit. Maybe that's not even a hair. I don't know. It is. Now we're getting, creating people or something. Whoops. Creating finger dips and whatever. This probably happened from where my dog went out and came back in while well, through this room while I was painting. Sometimes I just leave those in there as part of like the energy of the painting. Maybe I should have done that. Whoops, we have a paint shirt. Let's see, that one looks like a person. What's that one? Okay. I guess that was the only thing that was going to happen with silicone was we went down to the canvas and I had to put a dot of latte there. I love it. I, it does remind me of like 
I know what it reminds me of, what wintry thing it reminds me of. The blue and the latte give it like an icy look. It's kind of green, but it has like that icy look too from the like the the pigment and the light blue. It makes me think of um Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, whenever they go, they chop off a glacier and like go out into the water. That's what it reminds me of. Um, because I said, like I said, it gives me the landscapey feel. So let me know what you think. I'm going to wash my hands again and take the phone down to try to show you what it looks like up close. And then I'm going to go. I'll post the replay to YouTube. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the heart. Thanks for the likes. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. That's for the people watching the replay because, well, for now, like leave them in the comments while I wash my hands and I will be back. But also that goes for you on the replay too. And then after I end the live, I will scrape up all that paint to save it. I want to do a painting next month where I use all of my scraped up like leftovers in some kind of a piece. Okay, I'm going to take this down. I'm going to unplug the microphone and figure out how to turn it around. And I'm going to take you around and show you the close-up. Okay, so here's what it looks like. I can't turn the flash on. Whenever I do this that I know of, 
but I will take some videos with the flash and post them to my socials later this week. Um, it's 6 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to get ready for bed. I'll get as close as I can so you can see. Let me see if I can bring the light closer so you can see some of the transparency and the way that um, you can see. A lot of that shiny look I think is from the pigments. But the paint itself is really shiny too because of the medium that I used. It reminds me of a winter wonderland. I know it's going to dry a lot darker than it looks right now just because doing the close-up it looks really dark. But look at all those details and all those layers and all that frosty winter wonderland look. It's a very simplistic, just a couple of colors and a couple of pigments, but... Oh, I see a crow! A big smiling crow and a moon. Oh my goodness, that's so cute. Sorry, I'm shaky because it's... I'm tired. It's past... well, it's about my bedtime. After this, I'm going to go um, get ready for bed and watch. I've started watching. Get ready for bed and watch. I've started watching Buffy again. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I started it when I was in college and I never finished it, so I started it over. Like, I haven't watched it in almost 20 years. And I started it over recently, so I'm excited. And then I'll work on some of the, I'll take some close-up videos of the wet results and post them this week. And then whenever it dries, I'll get some dry results. still have some dry results I haven't posted from the first ones I used with like the red and green. But I'll get there. Um, I'm not outside in the daytime a whole lot. Now I'll back away again and see if you can see that, um, like this is the watery river part and this is the other side of the maybe it's all water but that's like the frozen part but then this is like the hillside and all the tr frozen trees like snow top trees and there's like the sky or like a road that goes up a hill in the background or maybe that's like a big cave you can go into in the background that's what I see sorry I'm shaky let me let go of the light and hold my camera with both hands. I love it so much. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a blessed day. Bye.